I'm very excited to be reviewing the Roborock E25 Robot Vacuum slash Mopping Robot. After putting it through our battery of tests, we found it to be surprisingly good. Roborock did send me this E25 for free to review, but I like to think the tests we put robot vacuums through speak for themselves and leave very little room for favoritism on my part. So, links in the description for current prices and reviews, and let's get started. So the E25 is the middle tier vacuum from Roborock, not as expensive as their top of the line S5, but a bit more expensive than their budget version, the C10. One of the main differences between the E25 and the S5 is that while the S5 uses invisible lasers to map and navigate, the E25 uses a dual gyroscope and dual optical motion tracking sensors, which they call an electric eye. So the E25 uses these sensors in conjunction with its pretty advanced algorithm for its smart navigation. While most vacuums in this price range just pinball around randomly to clean, the E25 navigates in straight, efficient lines while at the same time navigating around obstacles as well as incorporating edge cleaning in each run. I honestly have no idea how it does this, but to me its navigation is virtually indistinguishable from the top of the line smart navigation bots, which are two or even three times the price. The straight back and forth cleaning also helps reduce overall cleaning time, and generally it cleans more efficiently. So yeah, high marks for its smart navigation and obstacle avoidance. I literally can't find anything negative to say about it. We tested its airflow and found that it was extremely powerful. In its max power mode, we measured 17 CFM of airflow, which is the same as the top of the line Roomba 980 and i7. It actually has four power settings, which is more than I've ever seen on a robot, and even the next step down from max power, the strong power setting, is pretty high at 15 CFM. As far as the pickup test, I was genuinely impressed. On carpet, it was excellent, picking up all the debris from fine debris to extra large debris and pet hair. We found that while it did better on max power, the difference between medium high, medium low, and low power were all pretty minimal. In other words, it was uncommonly good on carpet on all its settings. With hard floors, again, I was very impressed. Not only did it pick up all the debris in the test, we found that it kicked around less debris than any Roomba we've tested, which tend to be quite messy. The only issue we found was that in its lowest setting, what Roborock calls silent mode, it did struggle with fine debris on hard floors. It did pick it up by the end of its run, and it did quite well with large debris and even pet hair in silent mode, but its silent mode just has too little airflow to be as effective on hard floors. But on the plus side, all three of the other power settings prove to be more than enough power on hard floors. Part of the reason it does so well with pickup is that it has a pretty advanced brush roll system which adjusts to the floor height. It's a much higher quality brush design than you typically see with robots in this price range. All that to say that some robot vacuums can get away with having less power if they have good cleaning mechanics, but the Roborock E25 has a lot of power and really good mechanics, so yeah, it's really good at cleaning. One super important factor is the dustbin size. It's so important with robot vacuums as they can only clean as long as their dustbin isn't full. And the Roborock E25 has a very big dustbin at 640 milliliters, on that point, the dustbin is easy to remove, easy to empty, and it also has a HEPA filter which attaches to the bin. It has better than average edge cleaning. In fact, I can't remember a robot doing as good with edge cleaning as the E25. It's really quiet. It was 70 dB in max mode on hard floor, which is significantly less than the Roomba 980 on max, and it goes way down from there. It's probably one of the quietest robot vacuums I've tested. It has a nice low profile at 3.6 inches, the same as most Roombas, but it does much better with climbing 90 degree obstacles, and it's light years better than any Roomba in terms of not disturbing small throw rugs. One thing with robot vacuums I've come to expect is a certain amount of mess in the housing and around the brush after a lot of cleanings. But after all the tests we put it through, it really was remarkably clean, which suggests that it's more efficient than most when it comes to cleaning. Even the brush was fairly clean. Roborock does claim it's an anti-tangle brush, the same brush that's on the high-end S5, so maybe that's why. Its battery life is pretty decent considering its power. Roborock claims 100 minutes on low power, and that's true, but on max power it drops to about 51 minutes. The next step down, strong power, got a little over an hour, about 61 minutes. So it's not amazing, but it's not bad either. Again, consider in the same test conditions, the Roomba 980 only got 48 minutes with pretty much the exact same power output. I should also mention that I didn't test the so-called standard mode, but you can assume it would be between 100 and 61 minutes. The app is pretty good for what it does. You can schedule cleanings from anywhere with cell service. You get reports on the progress or alerts if there are problems. 
You can choose the power mode, start and stop cleanings. It even develops a map after a few runs, though I couldn't get this feature to work until I updated the software. It's also compatible with smart devices like Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. All right, so let's move on to the negative stuff. So I haven't talked about the mopping feature yet. The E25 comes with a mopping attachment that locks onto the bottom of the unit. You just fill it up with water and it slowly saturates the mopping pad. The robot functions normally as a dry vacuum at the same time. It comes with extra pads and a special waterproof pad for the dock to use when mopping. I personally have yet to test a robot mop hybrid that is very effective at mopping, and the E25 was no different. I tested it with some stains that have been on the studio floor for about a week, and after running a full cycle, it didn't get the stains. It's serviceable as a mop if you just want a surface cleaning, but it's not going to take the place of a mop, but again, I've yet to find a robot vacuum hybrid that can. It doesn't come with any barrier feature on the app or any other kind of barriers like magnetic strips. This isn't a deal breaker as most people don't even use them, but it would be an issue if you had certain areas that you didn't want the robot vacuum to go that you couldn't block off by other means. It also means that you probably would not want to use the mopping feature if you have a mix of hard floors and carpet, since the robot would just start mopping the carpet as well unless you were keeping an eye on it. Like almost all robot vacuums, it struggles with black carpet. The drop sensors think it's about to fall off a cliff, and so it just can't clean black surfaces. This is pretty much the same on all robot vacuums with cliff detection sensors. So despite those minor things, the Roborock E25 was really impressive. The navigation blew me away by performing like vacuums twice its price. It also punches above its weight class in its cleaning ability on both hard floors and carpet, and does so with significantly less mess than average. It has a ton of power, a huge dustbin, good battery life, and its brush and other components seem well built. Also, because Roborock has become one of the best robot vacuum manufacturers in recent years, it's not hard to find replacement parts or other consumables. Links in the description for current prices, and consider a like or even better, a subscription to Vacuum Wars if this video helped you out. And thanks for watching.